Blue Season is a band consisting of Marwan Nathar, Alexis Mora, Noah Cohill, and Daryl Metzoon from Riverside, California, all students from University of California, Riverside. From their different backgrounds, musical talents, and inspirations, the members gel to create a sound that is uniquely their own. Their passion to create is evident, and they hope to bring it to the masses. Their single, Take It Easy, is available to stream on all platforms. Their EP, Knock on Wood, will be available to stream on all platforms. Information can be found on their Instagram, at season underscore official. Thank you guys for agreeing to be uh, making it here and there. Uh, I'm excited to have my first band uh, in doing an interview. Um, so if you guys can introduce yourselves and introduce yourselves as a whole and what you guys play. So I'm Alex. I play the piano. At, and yeah, we're Blue Season. <laughs> They're going to introduce themselves. I'm Noah. Uh, I play drums and I sing on occasion. On many occasions now. <laughs> on many <laughs> occasions. <laughs> Uh, I'm Daryl. Uh, I play guitar and bass. Pretty much that. Yeah. <laughs> piano. Oh, yeah. Piano that one time. That's true. Yeah. That's true. And piano that one time. Uh, I'm Marwan. I play guitar and I sing and like the occasional bass. And, uh, now drums one time on one song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we switch around a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Great. So tell um, everyone how you have met and how the band formed. So we first started with Marwan and another guy called Norbu. They they met and you you could tell it you could tell it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I met Norbu who's um, who still plays with Blue Season but not as regularly anymore. Um, okay. And um, we uh, we just we we started jamming and we decided you know let's make a band. Um, and so I'd known Alex from before, and so I just hit up Alex and was like, hey, like, you want to play bass in, in this band we're trying to make? And so we came by, we jammed, and we're like, all right, cool. And so it was me, uh, Norbu, and Alex for some time. We played, like, one or two gigs with, uh, with just the three of us. Yeah. Uh, no drummer or anything. And then Noah came along. I started running into him everywhere, <laughs> and, uh, and he, he hopped on, and, and yeah, he's, he's been here ever since. Um, and then Daryl is the newest member. He joined just a couple months ago. Um, and um, Daryl, how did you meet? Oh, oh you I, met, I met Noah in my dorm hall last year when I was the first year at UC or here, technically, yeah. And then I was just telling him, like, oh, yeah, I'm looking for people to play. Yeah, then things, one thing led to another, you know. <laughs> That's how it usually is, right? One thing leads to yeah. another. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, question for question for each of you: What um, sparked your interest in music? Mm. And what was the question? What sparked your interest in in music, playing music, singing? Like individually, or like us together? Yeah, yeah like individually. Like, what got you started? Did you like just pick up a guitar one day, and it just, you know, the <laughs> sun came, you know, like the rays came down, and all of a sudden you oh, started. Nice. Jamming out to Jimi Hendrix, or what? What? Uh, what's what got you guys interested in doing your own uh, playing instruments and singing? Well, I know for me, I grew up in a household where everyone was talented in some sort of way. Like my dad is really good at writing uh, lyrics, and he makes music with his friends all the time. And my mom used to play guitar, and she plays piano and sings as well. Um, so just being around that sort of environment and Eventually, they got me like this uh, really crappy drum set that oh, they bought, no. 50 bucks, yeah. and I just couldn't stop hitting it. And then I used to, back when I used to go to church, um, I used to sing the church songs, but I would sing them like they were like heavy metal songs. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> <laughs> so that was something that I did when I was younger. And progressively, like I started playing more drums. And then it wasn't until about like three, four years ago during the summer when I actually got like a legit drum set and I sat down and played it and I was like, wow, like I enjoy doing this. I want to do this more often. 
So then I started looking for people to like play music with, and I formed a band in high school. And then as soon as I came to Riverside, I just had to find more people to play with, and then I found these guys. Like by week two of your first year. Yeah, it's pretty lucky. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for me, I um, when I was uh, when I was younger, my gra my grandma was a was a cellist. And oh, she wow. played piano also, and, and so she was she was just teaching me a couple of scales and stuff like that on the piano. And I always thought it was cool, but I never did much more than that uh, on the piano. And um, like I, I like enjoyed singing along to songs and stuff like that as a kid, but like I, I didn't do uh, much else until high school when I heard this really awesome ukulele arrangement of a Beatles song. Uh, it was the oh, arrangement wow. by Jake Shimon Bukuru. Um, and I thought it was awesome, and so I just bought an ukulele and started to learn how to play it. I just like started bringing it to school and just like learning, you know, as as I went along and stuff. And then I uh, played that for a few months, uh, like maybe like six months, just that. And then I just got a guitar and started figuring out how to play that too. And then I, uh, yeah, just kept going with that. And uh, over time, I just like, I mean, I, I was practicing a lot, and and like I was definitely like really really into it. Um, and I, and when I started college, I wasn't at first planning on majoring in it, maybe just minoring in it, but I started not being able to do my my classwork for any of my not music. Oh, I, I, I have the <laughs> so I, I started just not being able to do any of my work just because I was always thinking about music and always uh, playing and that kind of thing. And so I was just like, you know what, I, I need to major in this. And so I majored in it. Awesome. Um, what have been some of your intercultural in influences on your music? So Marwan, I know you are from Egypt. So what, you know, what are some influences you have from there, from your family? Um, I, I love Egyptian music a lot. And uh, it's interesting because it uses a completely different tuning system. I believe it's right. uh, 24 notes uh, in, the, in the Egyptian tuning system. So there's a lot of, do, do you know, do you know any music? It was I don't really know how to play any music, unfortunately. Okay, but basically, like you know, like and and like if you're like looking at the piano, you know, like you hit one key and then like you go a little bit to the right, you know, hit the next key, it goes higher and so on. In Egyptian music, there are notes between these notes on the piano, so there, there's oh, okay. there's just, like a lot more notes between between the notes that that we have here in Western music, uh, which is really interesting, and um, I, I like I, I love that music a lot. And I have done some arranging for uh, of Egyptian music for the UCR uh, Jazz Combo and Jazz Big Band um, uh, of uh, of like, older older Egyptian music, and it definitely like the sounds of it definitely come come out of my playing a lot a lot of the the modes that are used in it uh, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. What about you guys? Any other like intercultural influences or cultural influences on your music, or you know what, what influenced you growing up? Do you guys have any? Uh, yeah, I, I do. <laughs> um, uh, for me, it's a lot of um, like Mexican and Spanish music. So mm. it's it's a lot of the rhythms and the styles they have. Like for example, salsa. There's like cumbias, and those those are all like different. They have different like rhythms that are just standard to those styles, and I really like those are. I would really like to incorporate those into my own playing, because I, I like a lot of like rock music that's kind of heavy. Yeah. As well, so if you could like mix those those beats with that rock music, then that's that's like the birth of my sound. Like so what I what like influenced that sound that I want to create, and there's like a lot of the Latin genres basically. Mm. <laughs> this really influence. Uh, what what do you guys try to communicate in your music? What kind of emotions or what kind of um, any type of messages that you try to communicate? No, I feel like you. You want to say? I don't know. That's a, <laughs> a loaded question. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a wild question. There's a lot of things that I think all of us try to communicate, but we all try. It's like we're trying to say, we're all saying the same words, but they have different meanings behind them. I feel like that's how our music is formed. 
or at least the way that we write music. Um, I know for myself, whatever I'm playing, I I strive for really like I, I like emotion in my music. A lot of like emotion, but I also like a lot of like, deep thought. Uh, this is kind of a, a a question I haven't really thought about too much. Um, uh, do you want to? Uh, I, I was thinking okay. for us as a whole, we we try to mix everything that we if for for one song, for example, we try to okay. mix every every emotion that each member wants to wants to create through that song. And when we mix it, it like creates this multi perceivable message that somebody can can perceive. So for example, um, mm. somebody wants to wants have a very to have like a very dramatic effect while the other person wants like the song to just send this out this one message that says to 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 connect like uh, dreams of us mm. i was thinking mm. it's it's like the sound is very dramatic and it kind of takes you to a place where you're just like floating or floating in the ocean yeah. whatever yeah. but then it also has to do with connectivity how how the human race and how one person what, like needs to be connected in order to like stop barriers from like forming. Okay. I didn't what want about to... the song? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, I uh, I feel like also um, sh should I talk about the like the message in the cruises? It's up to you. Yeah. yeah, it's up to you. Um, we like we also always want to have um, you know our our music positively influence people and in some way, like be something that people can, can relate to and that can, can rise through. Um, so like the, we're working, uh, like I, I think we, we told you on, in the form that we filled out where we're ha having, we're releasing uh, our EP called Knock On Wood on April 13th. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. After that, we're uh, working on an album uh, called Anacrusis that's telling the story of uh, a person as um, they go through a lot of uh, uh, emotional uh, problems, you know, a lot of like, emotional and mental troubles and, uh, and that kind of thing, they get into uh, like depression and into things like gambling and, and stuff like that, and a lot of a lot of drinking and, and all that sort of thing. And it goes through the story as they go down that path, and how uh, in like the in the middle there's a, an epiphany that they have about yeah. how you know how, how they need to, to rise from all of that, and it goes from there into you know the steps that they start taking in order to to you know have a have a healthier mindset and you know be be a more just a more positive force in the world in general and uh we're connecting it to like a really really big message but we're still developing that so 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 not yeah. gonna yeah but it's, it's like a, yeah no i don't understand I'll, so I'll, tell me uh, go ahead oh, wait, what were you Sorry. saying i was gonna say what's like the message behind take it easy or um, what were you guys well, trying to convey with that <coughs> sorry i'm a little bit of cough um, oh, no. <coughs> with take it easy um Actually, since I wrote the lyrics to that, does one of you guys want to say say what it is? But you wrote the lyrics. I know, you wrote the yeah, lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? You would have a way better insight than any of us. All right, you wrote the lyrics. <laughs> All right. I've just been talking for a while, though. It's okay. Um, it's fine, dude. It's fine. Um, with Take It Easy, the, um, well, basically, it's a, I think this would help with, with identifying its uh, its message. Where Take It Easy falls on the, is going to fall on the album is it's going to be the song right after that like dreamlike point of epiphany, where that person starts to 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 you know have the the, the first realizations of how they need to, to rise from all of that. So the lyrics of it, you know, they um, they're the that person is basically talking to themselves and telling themselves, okay, you just need to like. Like relax a little bit. Don't like don't be so don't be so hard on yourself. Just like breathe. You know everything is okay. Like all all, all these thoughts and all, all like all this fighting that you're having in your head. Yeah, like it's it's just in your head. Uh, you know like it's it's okay basically. Um, and it is thing. Oh, like let music. Um, let me tell you what the actual line. So it says uh, he goes let music. The great facilitator let you express, let you confess, and set you into rest. So it's, I think it's pretty self-explanatory that line right there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's, it's basically yeah, it's, it's uh, like a, a like the the person is um, um, starting to is telling the story of a person as they're starting to rise 
um, from uh, from a negative place. You know, they're starting to. Um, Man, I'm having trouble. They're like, my, yo, the yeah, person yeah. is like tense. <coughs> like uh-huh. before, take it easy. There's like all these other songs that describe this person's like state of mind and physical mm-hmm. state. So it it kind of like in those states, it starts off kind of like lighthearted, and then it goes like into a curve down, and that's where mm-hmm. they're like, all tense and stuff. And then take it easy, kind of like it explains how that person realizes that that you, you just gotta like relax because like some things aren't as big of a deal as you as you make it in your mind to mm. yeah is that like that right it, it, yeah. it's a very simple message but it's got a lot of different layers and i also like that song because it has the different musical layers you know different sounds you know what i mean like i feel like you couldn't put it in one genre it kind of oh, yeah. was all over the place yeah, I listen to it, of course. Sweet, sweet. <laughs> I do my research. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, so, so speaking of your new EP, um, how have you been able to promote it? Um, how do you guys connect with, you know, trying to get new fans or trying to get your music out there? Uh, we've been trying to do a lot of that by word of mouth and also through our Instagram um, and our Facebook. We... We've been kind of bad at using Facebook. <laughs> I don't know. That's kind of like foreign territory for me. But we've did, we've definitely been using uh, Instagram to like tell people like we're hinting at it. We haven't outright said it, but right? No, actually, no, we, we, have. we said it last we week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but we we had been hinting at it. Yeah, we've been yeah. hinting at it for months. Mm-hmm. Um, so we did post that, and then also just telling our friends uh, we have, and also we're having a house show that we're hosting coming up. So that's gonna be the kicker for that. That's the listening party. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I saw that. There's like there's methods we do using social media, and there's also like like more like collaboration and press methods that are and like word of mouth too. So I guess having bands open for us. Having DJs play like at our at our shows, right, like, right, right. They could like tell their following, and it just spreads right. it out. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing. It's like I feel social media nowadays makes it really, at least, easier to get it out there. But at the same time, you know what you're up against. You know, you yeah. you know, you're you're facing up against the million of other bands that are out there. So you want to be able to stand out. Um, but what I I, I found um really what i liked about your instagram is just it's very authentic you know it's it's obvious that you're not trying to just be very flashy and you know everybody's a little different i mean i'm not trying to judge but you know what i liked about you is it's very authentic it's clear that you know it's all it's more about the music than the than the social media than the aesthetic you know which is which is good not them nothing against your aesthetics but that's what's important i think mm-hmm. um, really nice <laughs> thank, thank you, you. <laughs> thank you yeah no, no, of course um uh do you believe that your fans around the world can connect to your music i think the the messages that we're talking about they're things that almost everybody has experienced and so if like i think if, if we're looking at it from just like a uh, like if if can people relate to the message, then I think yes, people can definitely relate to the message. But it comes down to the style of the music. So like the basically mm-hmm. like uh, uh, the color of the plate that the message is presented on, uh, <laughs> or, or like the material of it or something, or like whether you're using you know like a, a fork and spoon or like a, like a knife or you know how are you eating? Um, right. I think there's there is definitely people that will appreciate the 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 sound that's that that the that we're portraying these relatable messages through, but it's not everyone. So it's just about finding the people that that you know that that do want to hear that. I think there's something for everyone though. I think we have a big enough yeah. of people, mm. and we all listen to different music. So we definitely portray our own like likes in music that I think everyone can at least take a bite of. That's a good point. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I would say so. 
That's sweet. Um, <laughs> um, have you guys done any type of, well, I know you guys are still in college, but have you done any type of like touring or are you guys considering doing that, you know, once you're out of classes or out of school for, for the summer? Um, we were talking lightly about having a tour after we released the album. You like mentioned that, but I didn't like really, really talk about it yet, right? Yeah, we're yeah. we just gotta get the album out. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> definitely, like definitely, definitely, though touring uh, when we graduate. Yeah, but if um, if we can figure out something like over a summer uh, after the album is out, that that would be really awesome. Also, you guys should definitely consider it. Although I know it's 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 expensive but you know it's you know like you said you want to be able to connect and put put your music out there and let people listen to you live would be you know it'd be a really great experience for you and for for your audience mm -hmm. um do uh what was i gonna say uh what are what are your next moves um you got the the ep coming out and you got the the release um concert or uh yeah the little release but what what else do you guys have coming up we have six shows in the next two weeks, which is wow. So, so there's there is gonna be a busy two weeks. Uh, we're playing, yeah, like a two or two on April sixth, one on the twelfth, okay. parties on the thirteenth, then one on the eighteenth, and one on the twentieth. Uh, so we're just right now, like short term, is we're just planning for those. <coughs> um, we are also going to be releasing uh, another single um, pretty shortly after the EP. We're thinking maybe like. A month or two after. Um, maybe, maybe a month. Yeah. Let's start putting all of this out. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so so another single, and then from there we'll uh, get to working on recording the rest of the album, um, and doing that. Um, we're also trying to to have the, to to host more shows and have the shows that we host be uh, centered around positive things. Like the, the listening party for the single for Take It Easy, we doubled that as a food drive, so people brought canned food. They get it for free. We're doing for the EP listening party uh, uh, on the 13th uh, coming up. We're having a clothes drive, so if people bring five um, articles of clothing, then they can get it for free. Uh, and so, so we're like trying to, to do more of those. What else? That's Let's awesome. Get some music videos out too. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh yeah, you got the music video. Yeah. You got to uh, put start posting for extras on your uh, Instagram. That's how you get the. Uh, <laughs> People just start showing up. <laughs> yeah, you got yeah, it. It's a really good idea. Yeah, you never know. Um, so you know what? What? What, is, what do you see like long term for the band? So you got some couple things coming up. What do you see? I know you guys are like I said. Sooner you guys are still in college, so it's kind of you still got to get that out of the way. But once that's out of the way, what, what do you see the band long term? For well, I think long term we're definitely trying to tour and like spread out not just stay in the riverside area so once we mm. just keep spreading out i think the opportunities will keep coming and, and mm. concept wise i think we definitely want to keep releasing more albums more music videos and more like art and stuff that comes with the music just to like spread out the the the, the arts art like artist yeah. side of it as well yeah seeing other themes and Things that will that will like be really fun to to show live as well. That's awesome. Well, it's good to hear that you're, you're trying to do something. That you you do see a future. It's not just oh, this is just for right now. And you yeah, know, hey, I gotta get I gotta get a forty hour job after this after college, and that's it. So it's it's oh, possible yeah. to do that. We're trying to live off of Lucian. That's <laughs> <laughs> this is a farm right here. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll oh, play. okay. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> farm. <laughs> well, um, thank you guys for for taking the time to talk to me. Um, sounds like you guys are on a good trajectory, and uh, you know, um, you guys keep in touch. Just let me know when you guys release stuff, so I can uh, start I can start plugging you as well. Oh, and yes. I, I really. And uh, yeah, I just think you guys are, you know, on, on a good track. And I just love to hear that you guys have a different sound and also the fact that you guys are trying to do something positive with your music. And, uh, you know, like I said, it just sounds really authentic and, and real, which is, which is nice. It's refreshing nowadays. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Thank you. 
Uh, and thank you for taking the time to, to sit down with us. It was really fun. Yeah. Thank you guys so much.